verses 18 through 21, if you're reading your English Bible. If you have brought your Hebrew Bible to read along with, you're, you, you did not. You got your Master of Divinity at Cornerstone Theological Seminary. I expect you to bring your Hebrew Bible from here on out. Okay. If you did bring your Hebrew Bible, it's the first four verses of chapter 2. A word of encouragement from the Lord this morning. He just wants us, he just wants us to catch a glimpse, to be reminded, brothers and sisters, of the reality of what we have just prayed. Man, there are times when it seems like anybody but God is in control. There is no authority except that which is given by God to effectively accomplish His plans and purposes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But I don't like that. Hey, join me in my, join me in my study on some days. And you can yell out to God with me. Just the reality. I hate this. It's wrong. It's unjust. The people that you created as your image, they take that which you've created good and they bend it toward evil. They take that which was light and they craft darkness. They take that which was meant for pleasure and they make it painful. They take that which was meant for wholesomeness and it becomes anything but. They take your beauty and celebrate ugliness. They take wisdom and delight in folly. How long? Just how long, O oh Lord? Even so come, Lord Jesus. And there's the encouragement, brothers and sisters. I promise you, beyond any shadow of a doubt, Jesus is coming again. Some days, we're encouraged with great joy, with great confidence and strength for the battle. And many days, it is a battle. Amen or no? It is a battle between good and evil, right and wrong, moral, immoral, light, darkness, death, life. And in many days, it's not just uh, it's not an us against them thing. It's a me against me. God deserves all glory. God is in control. Remember, we have just come out of a vision. And by the time we are done with this series of visions, can you at least imagine with me that Zechariah has to be absolutely exhausted? Uh, seriously. Just mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically exhausted. These visions are like engagements that you have pastorally on any given day. It's like whiplash. You go from one thing to another. 
and some of them seem so unrelated, and yet all of them are related. And they're encouraging us in doing the work to which God has called us so that God is central in every facet of our lives. Remember that central theme. We've just come out of angels, different colored horses who have gone out through the earth. Everything is at peace. We thought that was a good thing, but we found out that it wasn't, or at least seemingly it wasn't. Because there's an expectation that the nations are going to be judged by God before he truly makes the fullness of his kingdom known. Perhaps God favors the nations. And God gave a steadfast, clear, could not have been more clear, reply to his people. I am, always have been, always will be jealous for you. I love you. And the fact of the matter is, even though it's not clear to you in this day, in this moment, in the circumstances in which you find yourself, I am very angry with the surrounding nations and their actions and attitudes against me and my people. Judgment is coming. And my cities will again overflow with prosperity and the Lord will comfort Zion and again choose Jerusalem. The horses ride off into the sunset, apparently, maybe, I don't know, or there's a jolt. But what I do know is we shift from one vision to the next. And I lifted my eyes after hearing the word of the Lord and gaining understanding. I lifted my eyes and saw, this is chapter 1, verse 18. I lifted my eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these? And he said to me, Well, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then Yahweh showed me four craftsmen, four intent workers. And I said, What are these coming to do? He again pointed me toward the horns, and he said, These are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one raised his head. And these, craftsmen, workers, these have come to terrify them, to cast down the horns of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter it. This is where the throng of Judah would gather together and say, Our God is mighty. And you would hear, Who can stand against the Lord Almighty? This is a brief message this morning, and all God's people say, but it's a powerful one. One vision's gone, another vision comes. Behold, four horns. I don't know what kind of visions you have. This is not normal. Four horns. Standing for what? Well, I wonder, right? 
These horns have great metaphoric weight in the Old Testament. Horns resemble power, right? But we're used to seeing them on animals, not just the horns. I, and I wonder what drew his attention. One, of course, all of a sudden you're seeing four horns. That would grab my attention. Would it yours? I wonder if they're moving, rooting about, thrusting, power. Four horns, expansive, comprehensive. Make no mistake, the nations wield a lot of power. The nations can do a lot of damage. All God's people say, yeah. Yeah. Seen it? Been there? Those of us who are a little bit older, we've seen a few more things than some who are a little bit younger. We understand a little bit more history than those who are younger. We see things in the culture today of nations, totalitarian power, that causes us great disturbance because we've seen things that the younger generations have never seen happen that seems unthinkable to them, but we have seen it act in cruelty to humans. I saw a four horn, and I said, uh, thanks for helping me in the glen with the myrtle trees and the horses, but I, I need your help again. What are these? These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. These are the powers that were in play that caused the exile. There's not a great deal more that would have had to have been said to post-exile people. I can only imagine Zechariah having a visceral response to this. These four horns represent the powers that were in play that took God's people from everything they knew, that took God's people from everything that gave them comfort, that took God's people from the land that he himself had promised us. These are the forces that were in play that seem to have taken us from the blessing of God into the place of his anger. I don't know about you, but I don't like these four horns. God may have used them to accomplish his purpose, but I do not like these four horns. Is everybody in the house with me? Now don't try to figure out what four nations these are. Outside of Assyria and Babylon, who else are you going to put in there? The purpose, even of the four, is expansiveness and comprehensiveness. It's not the, it's not the names of the nations that are in play here. There's part of that that becomes timeless in its application. These were the nations. And all the evil that are represented by the nations. The nations that mock God. The nations in Psalm 2 that look up to God with fists raised and say, we'll show you. The nations in Psalm 2 that have God laughing 
in derision. And all my people have been able to see are the four horns. And on any given day, all you have thought has existed are the four horns. The nations, the powers that have placed you into captivity. These very powerful forces, these very powerful nations These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. These are the forces that have acted against you. If his point would have been particular nations... There probably would have been animals attached to the horns in description of the animals. We've seen that in other visions of the Old Testament. But God God doesn't leave us with just four horns. Saying these are the forces that have acted against you. These are the nations that have led you into exile. These are the nations with whom I am so angry. Because while I was angry with them, this is back to last week's vision, they made matters even worse in the inhumane ways they treated my people. Zechariah, lift your eyes again. Lift your eyes again. I need for you to move your eyes from the four horns to the four craftsmen. I need for you to see the workers. I need for you to see these four craftsmen who are purposed in their intentions, who know their work. I'm not sure what vision comes to mind when you hear this. And I'm not sure why it is for me. There there have been, when I have imagined this scene, there have been two different images that have come to mind. One has been the blacksmith shop at Colonial Williamsburg. And I see four craftsmen, kind of marred with Ashen face, arms, but strong, right? Working with one another in the fire, pulling it out. Beating this metal into the shape for which its intended use will finally come to fruition. Craftsmen doing something, producing something, working in a way that is good for you. I need for you to see these people. The other image for me has been a sculptor. Again, with great strength, chisel in hand, hammer, 
Watch as they craft. Watch as they make with beauty what my intention is. The Lord showed me, not the angel. The angel gives explanation. But I am not hearing a word simply from the angel. I am hearing a word from Yahweh, the creator, redeemer, God himself. And Yahweh, the covenant-making, covenant-keeping God, showed me four craftsmen. I said, not, what are these? I didn't even ask, who are they? I would have. The question is, what are these craftsmen about doing? What are these craftsmen accomplishing? What is the goal of the craftsmen? What are they coming to do? Zechariah, keep your eyes up. I want you to one more time look over at the horns. Remembering these are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one raised his head. Now, I want you to look one more time so that you can be grounded in your understanding that I care, that I am at work, that what I have just told you is true, that I am angry with the nations, and I am exceedingly jealous for you. These craftsmen, what are they coming to do? These craftsmen have come to terrify the horns. That's right. Do you still read the Bible this way with me? Don't you just, that's what I'm talking about. Don't you just want to say that? You come up on here to me. You can do that on me. You can't come up on God. Who do you think you are? These are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one raised his head. Now turn your eyes and remember these craftsmen that the Lord is showing you have come to terrify them. They have come to cast down the horns of the nations. Do you hear it? They have come to cast down the power and authority of the nations. They have come to cast down the, what seems to be the comprehensive authority of the nations. They have come to show you that God is sovereign and the nations are not. They have come to cast down the horns of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter it. The very ones that have done harm to God's people. God has always been sovereignly working in ways that we have not seen and in ways that we have not understood. You see, it is good for the interim period that there is peace. The craftsmen are at work. And your building of my house in the center, showing that you once again desire for me to be at the center of your life as individuals and as my community, my people, that work can go about unhindered. And I want you to understand something. There will be no hindrances in your work by threats or interference from surrounding nations. Be encouraged in that. 
Continue your work. I am in control. Continue your work. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. It is not in vain, never has been, is not, never will be empty. Look one more time. Four horns. Four horns that have acted, the nations who have acted against God's character. They have taken you into captivity, into exile. You have experienced human cruelty. I don't know what all their motives are, but the forces we've seen, we've seen the devastating forces of human cruelty in the midst of these four horns. We have seen the devastating impact of the desire for military might in the midst of these four horns. We have seen the devastating capacity for people to have a lust for political power in order to oppress everyone else. And the list goes on and on. Tremendous power and authority. But God wants us to know that any action against God's people is ultimately doomed to fail. I'm going to say it again. Because some of you, you came into this sanctuary feeling one way, and by God's grace and for his glory, I want you to walk out with a pep in your step, a smile on your face, confidence in your heart, and courage in your soul. Any action or actions against God and his people will ultimately fail. God is in the long game. And he is sovereign in the short. But this has been hard. Yes. Yes. And I'm standing with you as your pastor. I'm standing. This has been hard. I know. I look at some of you. The injustice suffered, it's wrong. The horns that are in play. The craftsmen of God will destroy those injustices in his time. And I wish it was today. The pain, the sorrow, the hurt that goes with trying to work within a system that doesn't make sense at all when my family's upside down, And can't figure out top to bottom. I don't know what my role is in it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What I see day in and day out are horns. The craftsmen are at work. And he will bring beauty and justice and freedom in his time for his glory. And I wish it was today. I've got some young people who are wrestling 
with the very nature and character of God. Who are only able to see the horns. And saying, I think it's time for me to distrust God and walk away. To deconstruct a faith that I never really had in the first place. Lift up your eyes. Turn your eyes from the horns. Look at the craftsman. God is at work in ways, again, that we cannot possibly understand. But when he says, I am bringing about good, he means he is bringing about good in the long game. And you can still walk faithfully in full trust and faith in him in the short game when it seems like other powers have all authority. Those who are true followers of Jesus Christ need to be able to see the craftsman and say, with great courage, I am God's and God is with me, us. God is for us. God will accomplish his purposes in us and through us. I believe him. I take him at his word. It is clear he is not oblivious to the four horns. He's the one who put them in our eyesight. I know who they are. I know what they've done. And I am at work bringing justice in the midst of that. But you've got to trust me. And you've got to be faithful and joyous in continuing to walk with me and to do the work to which I have called you. Hey, what are these? They are all of the forces and all of the weight of all of the nations that have acted against me to take you into exile. Okay. Then these craftsmen, what are they about to do? They have always been working because the day is coming when they are going to scare the living daylights out of the ones who have acted against me and my people. I will call them to account. I will terrify them. And I will cast them down. And you will know that my favor rests upon you and that you exist for my glory. This shows itself in the reality of the person and work of Jesus Christ who defeated the powers and kingdom of darkness in his sinless life, his substitutionary atoning death, and his resurrection. We are witnesses to the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The craftsmen have always been at work. The forces of evil have been defeated. This points eschatologically to the time when Jesus Christ returns and makes all things new. When you will finally fully be my people 
and I will finally fully be your God. The nations shall be judged in fullness. I will vindicate my name. You will know that all that I have said is true. I will vindicate the faith and the faithfulness of my people. You will know that you were right to trust in me all along, even when it seemed that others had more authority than me. I will bring about the completion of your redemption. And I'll bring about the consummation of all things. I will make all things beautiful, wise, right, just. Look at the craftsman. And don't be debilitated by the horns. God is on his throne. You can trust him. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for the encouragement of the reality of your knowing, the reality of your sovereignty, the reality of your working for the glory of your name and for the blessing of your children. Thank you for this brief yet powerful vision. We surrender to your glorious reign with great joy. having been encouraged. Bless your people with confidence as they seek to serve you faithfully, joyously, in a world that is increasingly acting against you. And grant hope in the midst of their work, in the midst of our collective work of making disciples that please you.